when I grew up, I lived in um, Southern California. And Southern California, about the only disaster you had to worry about uh, was earthquakes, and then there was fires, <laughs> and then there was floods and mudslides. And then later on, I moved to Missouri, and while you didn't have to worry about earthquakes so much, there was uh, tornadoes. That was new for me. The thunder and the lightning so loud, that was new for me. I remember the first time I was driving to work, and I actually saw a raindrop. I actually thought it was like a bird. A raindrop hit my windshield, and it was big enough that I could see it splatter. I had never seen stuff like that. And um, I was living with my father when I moved back here, and the very first thunderstorm in California, it was always a low rumble, like a suggestion that, hey, there might be some rain, maybe. And then you would even question, like, I was at thunder or my belly? I mean, it was just so slight. But the few earthquakes that I was in, when there was an earthquake, it would sound like a train had hit your house. I mean, it was just like, boom. So I'm laying in bed, and I hear a boom. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, we're having an earthquake. And I remember hollering across to my dad, going, Dad, are you okay? I'm just checking. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I'm fine. Okay, good. I'm fine too. Is that an earthquake? And he goes, no, that's thunder. I'd never in my life heard thunder like that. And I had never been a place where they would say that it was a downpour. In Southern California, close to the deserts, we would get sprinkles unless there was some... Uh, rains coming from the islands or stuff like that, but here it just fell in sheets. So experiencing the storms in California is a whole lot different than experiencing the storms in Missouri. However, I must say, if I'm going to take my choice, I'm going to stay here. Because at least you kind of have a warning if you're looking at the sky, if things are going to get a little funky. In California, you don't have a clue if the earth is going to start to shake underneath your feet. But in these storms, when a storm is coming, you do different things. Like in an earthquake, you really wouldn't run to your basement, but in a tornado, that's the best place to go. In an earthquake, it wouldn't matter if you were in a mobile home or a, a two-story brick building, but in a tornado, you have to have some wisdom. Don't run towards the mobile home, and don't, certainly don't crawl into your tent. Well, that's storms physically that we've been in. But we all, if we live any time at all, we have storms in our life. Those are different. Those are emotional storms. Sometimes they're physical. Sometimes they're financial. Sometimes they're relationships. Um, but they can come in all different areas. And as Christians, as believers, we shouldn't get surprised just because we stepped over to the right team. That doesn't mean that we're storm-proof. There are storm shelters. In fact, the Bible says that he's a strong tower, and we can run into that and be safe. If you're out on the ocean, um, and sometimes we call it the ocean of life, and it's tossing you around, one of the things that the boats will do if they can't get to a safe harbor is they throw down an anchor. And you'll still get tossed around, and you might get some water in your mouth, and you might, you, you might go down a time or two, but if you're holding on and that anchor has you, you can be secure in the fact that you're not going to blow away. Well, in the Bible, it says that our anchor is our hope, and who does the Bible say our hope is? Our hope is found in Jesus. So we're going to talk a little bit about the storms in your life and what to do when those happen, how to navigate through those different storms. So like I said, the, the weather gets stormy, but so does our life. And we can even have stormy seasons. They will tell us, oh, this is hurricane season, or this is tornado season, or this is fire season. And the good thing about if they put the word season on the end of that, then you know it's temporary. It's not permanent. Thank goodness we don't have an internal, like an energizer bunny rabbit that doesn't run out of a tornado that just spins constantly. Or thank goodness we don't have the earthquake that never goes away. See, it's, it's seasonal. That's the same way in our life. It comes in seasons. 
I like the seasons when winter is short. I like snow, it's beautiful, I don't like the ice. I like it to be cold during Christmas. I don't know, I like to cuddle up and turn the fireplace on. But after Christmas is over, then I'm impatient. And I'm like, okay, let's start planting some stuff. I'm ready for spring now. And sometimes we do have short win winters, and other times it's like, my goodness, what has happened? It seems like forever the skies are gray, the, the trees look dead, and you think, well, that even live? Will there even be a leaf on it come spring? So as Christians, we're going to have storms, but I want to let you know that there's a way that you can experience spring and not always stay in winter. There's a way that you can shorten some seasons, and by doing the right things, you can lengthen the other seasons that you like. If we use our time wisely in the storm, we can learn how to navigate through and even sometime rise above the storms of life. If we are wise, we can actually grow through those storms. We're sad to say we don't grow through successes. In fact, some people, if they get successful, they backtrack. But a failure, a mistake... You can usually grow through that, and you can see how far you've come. I remember um, uh, when a loved one passed away, I remember the first day that I actually got through the day, and at the end of the night, I laid down, and I, was, I wanted a gold star. I wanted a chart because I made it through that whole day. I made it through that whole day without crying. And I could look back and I could go, wow. Now, I cried that next morning, but still, I celebrated, oh, I think, I think I'm on the road. Just barely, but I think I'm on the road. See, when you have storms in your life, you can measure, bless you, <laughs> um, in all areas, bless you. Um, but in your storms, you can measure how far you've come. So storms actually, in a strange way, will help develop your character for who God has called you to be and the things that he's going to put in your life and the people that he's going to put in your life. Have you ever had a friendship who, with someone who really didn't ever know any hardship? It wasn't very deep. Or any time that you would have a problem, it would be like, I'm sorry, I can't relate. <laughs> My life's pretty perfect. And I could never really connect with them. But when I could run across somebody that I actually would say, you too? You understand? Man, that was, that was so different. And had they not gone through the hardship, they couldn't have pulled me through my difficult times. So I was thankful, not that they had to experience that, but I was thankful that when they were in their storm, that rather than it making them bitter and pulling away, it made them better and draw closer to their Heavenly Father. Because then that blessing transferred to me. And as God has us, we're to be a vessel that he works through and flows out. And because of that, then I can also help somebody else. Now, I told you I'm emotionally lazy, and I like the shortest route. I like the easiest. So I also will ask them what they've learned in their storm so that I can take what they've learned, not have to go through the exact same thing, and then I can pass that on to the next person. So there's a lot of benefits in the storm if you know what to do with that storm. So if you start to look at, okay, here's, here's where I am, this is what I'm going through. So rather than just going through it, what am I going to get out of it? Who am I going to become? What am I going to do with this? Once you start doing that, the storm starts to weaken. And it may be just a little ray of sunshine, but every once in a while you catch the ray of sunshine burning through the clouds. And before you know it, you'll be walking with sunny skies again. 
Seasons come and go in our life, people come and go in our life, jobs, situations, money comes and goes in our life, but there's one thing that remains, and that's that God is always in control. What confidence and what peace and security that gives me because I don't have to say, God, did you see that? He sees it all. You know, it's um, sad if you're with somebody and you see this miraculous, like, split-second event, and you're like, oh, did you see that? And they're like, no, I didn't see it. What happened? Man, you tried to explain it, but it's just not the same. Well, with God, we don't have to go, hey, did you see that when they slapped me upside the head? Did you see that when they talked about me the other day? God sees it all. So then I can rest in the fact of knowing that he's my heavenly father. He sees it all. And if I'll stay leaning on him, he'll work it out. In fact, he already said that. And he had somebody write it down in the Bible. Familiar verse. Most of you already know it. It says that he will work out all things for good. Not according to your plan, though. According to his plan. And then truly, that is the best life that we can hope for here. So seasons give us the incentive incentive to plan for the upcoming seasons. They talked about in the Bible to study the ants because the ants, when it was nice and sunny, they didn't lay like the lizards or the snakes on the rock. They were busy. In fact, it says busy as ants because they knew that winter was coming. They were planning for the next season. So as Christians, how do we do that? How do we plan for these upcoming seasons that, sure enough, if we live a few more days, it probably will come into our life, is you stay connected to the protector. You stay connected to the Savior. God will hear you in your times of distress. He's a good father. And he won't... He won't walk away from you. In fact, it says that he'll never forsake you. But how good is it to already have that relationship with him? And you don't have to come with, please forgive, please forgive, please forgive. But you can come with, God, I'm so glad that you're here. I'm so glad that I was doing what you told me. I was in the middle of your will and this storm came, so I know that you've got a plan for it. And when that's the case, it's not necessarily trying to teach you a lesson to correct your wrong decisions. It's another lesson in a different area. And I don't know about you, but if I'm going to go through some stuff, I don't like regret piled on top of it and guilt and shame. I want to go through a storm with a, a clear conscience if I can. So that's how you prepare for the upcoming storms in life. Seasons change. Well, unless you live on the islands, but most of the time, seasons change. And that's good news because it means that not everything is permanent. If we forget that, then we'll think that the darkness of winter is permanent. And with that mindset, what happens is in many of our decisions will be dark as well with dark results. But if you're familiar with the Bible or if you were alive in the 60s or the early 70s, I don't remember when the song came out, very popular was to everything, there is a time and a season. Well, they kind of stole that from the Bible because the Bible goes into specifics, but he talks about how there's a time for everything and for every purpose under heaven. So since there's a time for everything, that means things aren't going to permanently stay just one way. So if you're having a really rough time, I want you to know that sometime your roughest battles come before your greatest breakthrough. Don't give in. Don't give up. Hold on. Hold on because God has something for you in your season, otherwise you wouldn't be in the season. 
So meaning at just the right time, your season's gonna change. But a lot of that depends on our plan and how we use our time as to whether it is long drawn out experience or a season that will start to change into brighter days. So let's talk about some facts about storms before we close today. Storms are natural. They're not abnormal. When you see it rain, you don't freak out and go, oh my gosh, would you come and look at this? There's just stuff coming down from the sky. I wasn't expecting this at all. That sounds kind of uh, far-fetched, doesn't it? But if we're not careful, Christians have sometimes been sold the wrong bill of goods, saying, if you become a Christian, then all your worries are over with. There's not going to be a storm. There's not going to be a problem. You're not going to have to still struggle with things and issues. Just become a Christian. And I've said it before, but it's worth saying again, the difference between becoming a Christian and going through a storm and not being a Christian is you have somebody to hold on to that's going to be there with you. They're not going to say, sorry, hope you, hope you make that one. We'll see how you do. Talk to me later. No, you have a Savior that stays with you closer than your next heartbeat. So storms are natural. The other thing is storms are temporary. Storms are always moving. And storms change things. Living in Missouri, you know that you can go to bed. It can rain, it can thunder. Your yard can look really nice when you go to bed. Storm comes through and you got debris everywhere. Sometimes trees that you thought would never fall, they had fallen, branches, all kinds of stuff. And sometimes you end up with strangers, uh, people's things in, in your yard as well, too. Like, well, where'd that come from? That wasn't in my household. I didn't, that's, that's not mine. But storms, they change things. They change situations. Storms will expose weakness. For instance, when the tornado came through, thankfully it was not during school hours. Because at that time, the plan was go into the hallways. You'll be safe. That's going to work. Sit down, cover up your head, but go into the hallways. And I don't know if any of you saw the video cams from the schools that did somewhat survive. The hallways was definitely the place that you did not want to be. But the people coming up with the plan, that looked good. But see, a storm showed that's the weakness. You need to do something different. Well, when you have storms come in your life, you may think you're one way, but all of a sudden, this other person sometimes comes out and these things come out of your mouth, and you're like, where did that come from? I didn't know I would crumble so much in these certain situations. That let you know that, okay, this area, I think I need to kind of work on it. It's exposing an area about myself that I didn't realize was there. So storms will change things. They will expose your weaknesses. For instance, there's some trees that look strong and healthy. I had one of those in my yard, and it was tall. And a storm came by, and it really was not that bad of a wind. And this thing, it went across the walk and part of the yard. I'm telling you, this was a tall, tall tree, but it was a pine tree. And I didn't know that the pine trees, they weren't rooted as deeply as your oak trees. And I was taken by surprise. Or you have, can see some huge oak trees and they look like they're thriving and doing fine until the first wind comes along and all of a sudden they fall down. And when you see inside of the tree, while the outside looked fine, there was disease inside and it was brittle. And it had already died inside. It just hadn't let the leaves know yet. It just hadn't went all the way out. But you don't know that until a storm comes. So that lets you know, oh, there's a weakness also, it can transfer to relationships. 
you can think a person is strong and they're going to be there for you and they can, you can count on them, but the first upset comes and all of a sudden they're not there at all for you. And you thought, man, I thought that was a one person I could depend on. Well, that's not something that happened to hurt you. That's God letting you know this isn't the one to run to in a storm. However, we can also, on the flip side, we can underestimate people. We can think, oh, they fall apart at the drop of the hat. They can't handle anything. But then you go through a rough time, and them, of all people, they're the ones that's calling you, checking up on you. They're there like a strong tower for you to lean on. They'll, t they'll send you stuff like, I said a prayer for you today. And you're like, wow. See, I wouldn't have seen that. Had I not gone through a storm, I wouldn't have found out who my, my strong towers were in my life. So don't always run from the storm. So storms come to change things. They're temporary. They're always moving. And they will expose areas that need to be strengthen. When you're in a storm, it's easy to see the negative because it's just right there. And if you forget about it for just a minute, it's going to be right back in your face again. And the only problem with that is it keeps you stuck. And whatever you focus on is magnified in your life. So, and it's okay because, see, we have to go through processes in our life with storms too. After the tornado, just because you called a roofer didn't mean that your roof was fixed. Just because you called a realtor because your house was destroyed didn't mean that you had a place to go to. See, there's, there's a process. But you keep your eye on the goal. You don't just give up because there's a hole in your roof and go, well, there's a hole in my roof. I guess I'm just going to go sleep in a tent. No, because there's some value that's there. So you keep your eyes focused on the progress. The same thing with your storm. Find something, even if it's just so small, find something to keep concentrating on that's, a, that's good. That's good in the storm. Because then if you find one thing, the way that we're trained, another thing will show up. And another thing will show up. And it will bring more balance to your life so you don't feel like you're getting tossed in the storm. Storms show us what needs to be improved in our lives. Sometimes that's a health storm. Going along fine and all of a sudden you have this health scare. And the doctor says, you need to make some changes. Well, that's a physical storm, but it can be a great outturn. For instance, like the tornado here, some of the buildings actually needed to be blown away as long as nobody was hurt. And in, in its place, we got some nice new things. In its place, because there was a storm, volunteers came in and they helped us rebuild. Because there was a storm, people poured money into our city. Because there was a storm and we persevered, we changed some things in the world. What am I talking about? For instance, the way that we did the mail service, they didn't have a, a plan for what to do in such a case like this. They came up with one. And now the entire United States uses that one. If you were here during the tornado, you knew that on the radio station when you would turn it on, you weren't going to hear your favorite tunes you were going to hear people going, we found so-and-so, they're safe. We're looking for so-and-so. If you need to get food, if you need to get water, here's where to go. That was wonderful. I think they did that for like three days straight, maybe longer than that, because our, a lot of our phones didn't work. Well, because of them doing that, there's now other cities and states across the United States that does the same thing because they benefited through going through our storm. That's why I tell you so often, share your story. Share your story because you're going to help somebody else. So storms in our life will show us what needs to be improved upon. Storms will also 
sorry, but they're going to test your faith. Because sometimes all you hear is the storm so loud that you don't hear the still, small voice of your Heavenly Father. It will test your faith to say, will you stay faithful even if? Will you stay faithful to where I've called you even if? Will you stay faithful to the ministry even if? See, storms have to come because he needs to know who he's dealing with. Not that he's taken by surprise and not that he's going to give up on us, but he will mold us, and if we're smart enough, we'll stop and go, you know, every time I do this, it doesn't end up well for me. There's a storm that comes in my life. So he wants us to start learning from our storms, not just praying, God, make it end, God, make it end, God, make it end, or God, weaken the storm. If you pray, God, strengthen me through this storm, you're going to come out with some goods. You're going to come out with some goods that's going to help make this world a better place. So storms will test your faith. Sometimes they'll destroy what you've built so that the master can rebuild. Again, referring back to the tornado, the house may have looked good and strong, but after the winds came, a lot of the contractors started putting what they called hurricane hooks into the roofs because they would see some houses and they'd think, why did that house survive? And that house didn't survive. Well, it's because of the way that it was built. And so when a storm comes, sometimes it will tell us if we are building and putting our hope in something that's so easily going to crumble and get tossed away. For instance, if you put your hope in a person, always, you're going to get disappointed because they're human. And that's too high of a standard and too high of a bar to expect nobody to ever mess up to expect to never have to give them grace or mercy and forgiveness in this relationship. But I want you to know that if you build your relationship and your hope on the master builder, then together you can make a great life. And then he will start putting people in your life that you can depend on, but you'll depend on him first. He'll put people in your life that you think they are trustworthy. I can talk with them as long as you talk with him first. So you're building a life. Find out if the master builder is on the same page as you. Storms will help you to keep or get your priorities right. They will show you what really matters in life. I've had friends who have fought the battle of cancer. Some won, some lost. But it changed them. It changed them from not being so upset about the little trivial things that really didn't matter. And they focused more on the things that did matter in their life. Had that storm not come in their life, they may have went to the grave with a lot more regrets. But because that storm came in their life, they started taking a different look, a different attitude towards life and towards people. Storms even come emotionally when you lose somebody and they change your priorities. Because for some reason, we think we're like the energizer bunny and we'll just keep going and keep going but everybody's days are numbered and age doesn't have anything to do with it. Death knows no age. So when the storms come, it helps us to appreciate the sunshine in our lives more. When we've been in the valley, it helps us to appreciate those mountaintop views where you can see everything. And the more that you keep your priorities straight, the quicker you're gonna get through the storm and the more mountaintop days that you're gonna have. Storms remind us that our days are numbered and to be thankful for each day. 
storms remind us that God is in control, and I like that much better. Again, on the laziness side, I'd much rather he drives. I'd much rather that he writes out the map and tells me which way to go. I can do that. You just tell me which way to go. It reminds me that even in the storm, he can see through the clouds. He's not blinded. He's not blown away. And storms can remove pollution and toxic things out of your life. I told you that I was raised in Southern California, and the town that I was raised in, they called it a basin because it was surrounded by mountains. And um, when I was nine, I came back to Oklahoma for a visit, and I was blown away by the blue skies and the big white clouds. I just was mesmerized, and I'm like, you guys have this like every day? Because there was always kind of like a, a haze because the stuff would settle. However, when the storms would come with the big winds, they would come down off of the mountains and they would take that pollution and rise it up above the mountains. And for a few days there, you had some blue skies. And it blew all the dust and debris, it blew it out and it was gorgeous. The same thing happens in our life. We will have storms for the purpose of blowing some pollution out. In other words, it's going to blow some toxic people that are out of your life. Let them go. Don't get a trash bag and haul them back in and put them in your living room floor. <laughs> if God is pulling some people out of your life, don't just quickly go and reach and pull them back. Find out, well, maybe... Maybe God's blowing some stuff out. Maybe he's blowing some debris out so that I can experience better days. So storms will actually also blow out some pollution that's in your life. So how do we survive these storms? We have to build on a firm foundation. Let's quickly read in Matthew chapter 7, 24 and 27. I like that Jesus is a storyteller. I can visualize um, better when somebody will paint a picture with their words, and he does this. In fact, um, in Sunday school, we used to sing a song about a wise man that built his house up on the rock. Do you guys remember that one? And then the rains came down, and yeah. So that came from Jesus, uh, another song that came from the Bible. But he's talking about how it is important of what you build your life on. How many of you are familiar with the ancestry test where you, you know, spit in the thing and send it off and they tell you what your origin is and all that kind of stuff? And so many people have been surprised because they thought all their life they were here and they find out, oh, I didn't know I was that. Who am I now? I've built all of my idea about my background and my culture on this and, oh, I'm not that. Well, when you have a firm foundation built in Christ, when you are a child of God, you're always going to be a child of God. That's a firm foundation. And with that comes promises from the Bible. So he's telling us to build our house. So um, let's read 24 to 27. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock and the rains descended and the floods came up and the winds blew and beat on that house and it didn't fall for it was founded on the rock but everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand and the rains descended and the floods came up the winds blew and beat on that house and it fell and it was a great fall and I'm going to apologize because those of you that know that song, if you have it on your mind the rest of the afternoon, well, <laughs> that just happens. Um, but storms come. So what he's saying by this is that storms come to everyone. We're not the only one. So don't focus so much on the storm, but focus on the foundation. Make sure that your foundation is built on something that is strong and solid and will still remain even if everything else gets tossed away. Storms create survivors that inspire other people. We're never remembered about what we avoided in life. 
but we're remembered by what we survived in life. And never, ever, ever lean on anyone who hasn't made it through a storm. We are stronger Christians. We'll be like that tree that's planted by the water that sings, oh, here we go, another song. I shall not be moved. Why shall that tree not be moved when the winds come? Because it was planted by the water and the roots are constantly getting nourished. So Jesus is referred to as the living water. And sometimes I've been dry like a tree and a little crispy and a little leaves all wilting. But those times came when I had pulled away from the source a little bit. I'm not saying that you still won't have rough times, but I'm saying it won't affect you the same way as if you stay connected to the source for your nourishment. Storms in closing, they make us, they reveal who we are, they cleanse us. And after the storm comes a rainbow. And you can already see then clearly what your next step should be. Your storms won't last forever, but God will. So praise him through the storm. Don't praise him for the storm, but praise him through the storm. Meaning he's the one that can keep you from blowing away. Why? Because he's the one that remains in control. He works all things out for your good according to his purpose. And his plans for you are good. They're not evil. Why? Because he's a good, good father. And he loves you. The closing song this morning is in the eye of the storm. And it talks about the different things that's going to come through our life. But he's the one that remains. If you don't know him as your savior, please don't try to do life on your own. It's too hard. It's too heavy. And if you've known him as your savior, but you've kind of walked away from the living water, from the source, and you've had some storms, just make sure that it's not storms that you're bringing upon your own self. (laughs) Because they don't have any value, but the storms that God brings, they'll have value. So ask him to help you through the storms and to quit um, walking into the rain unprepared, (laughs) to start preparing for the upcoming storms. And the quicker that you do that, the quicker your sunny days will come. I love you. God bless you. That you do that.